Look, you've had your hand up for a while. I'm going to take your question. You. Lady in the front there. <laughs> Look, my one question is basically, or my one comment or passing comment is that so many times you've brought up women in Islam. i just like to correct that I've read the Quran and all Muslim scholars would agree with me that Islam gives women a lot of rights. We over and over give Islam, women in Islam through the Quran, I may not say it through individuals who preach the religion, but Islam through the Quran gives women a lot of rights and I need that to be heard. I need it to, to have everyone to understand and hear that. I mean, I am a young Muslim woman myself. I sit before you, I have a voice and I can speak to you and I can look you in the eye and I do have my rights. And when I go to Iran, I'm actually Iranian as well, so when I go to Iran, I also have my rights. I need it to be heard that the Quran, the Quran, Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us our rights. In people, individuals in countries and people who represent our religion may not, and they may do the wrong thing to um, sort of stand in front and show us religion and preach us religion, okay. but Islam does. All right. We're going to take that as a comment, a very passionate one at that. Okay. Well, no. Uh, no, we're not. No, we're not going to take it as a comment. I can, <laughs> I can see your face, I can see your hair, and I can see you sitting in an audience with young gentlemen. Don't you tell me you can do any of that in Iran. I can, though. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you cannot. I can in Iran. In Iran, in the Islamic Republic of Iran, where I have you been, could, you my I hair would be hair. out. My no. hair would be out because my veil would be little. My hair would be out. It may be covered a little bit, but just like in, in, oh, in the on. Bible, in the letter to the Corinthians, okay. Okay. it says to cover your no, hair no. to be modest. It's a shame she spoiled what could have been a perfectly be. good statement. Oh, All right, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Would be there. I mean, you've been talking about these cheap, uh, cheap jokes you say you throughout have, this if, whole if conversation, you that but you're the only one you making insult, the cheap comments. You insult, you insult your sisters in Tehran who are being beaten, <laughs> who are being beaten and raped every Allah day when you say not, that they have their rights in the Islamic Muslim Republic. You, it's an insult to the women of Iran. I do not. Okay. As a Sufi Muslim, I'm very ruffled by the title of your book. Of all the titles that you likely had at your disposal, did you have to settle for the literal negation of Allahu Akbar? Yes. I thought so. Yeah, thank you for that question. Thank you. Oh, it's a very good question. I'm glad. I wanted to come well, back to it. Um, Why? Yeah. The, as I've said, I, I think that all religions are wrong in the same way, in, in that they privilege uh, faith over, over reason, but they're not all equally bad in the same way all the time. I mean, if I'd been writing in the 1930s, I would certainly have said that the Roman Catholic Church was the most dangerous religion in the world because of its open alliance with fascism and anti-Semitism, which the damage from that our culture has n never recovered from and, and never will. But at the moment, it's very clear to me that the, the most toxic form that religion takes is the Islamic form. The horrible idea of wanting to end up with Sharia, with a religion-governed go state, a state of religious law, and that the best means of getting there is jihad, holy war, and that Muslims have a special right to feel aggrieved enough to demand this, I think is absolute obscene wickedness, and I think their religion is nonsense. And the, the entire, I, I, I entire had another, I had in its entirety, the, the idea of God, God speaks to some illiterate merchant warlord in Arabia, and he's able to write this down perfectly, and it contains the answers to all human. Don't, don't, don't waste my time. It's bullshit. But, but you're saying the same also about that, also that God, that God speaks. The Archangel Gabriel speaks only Arabic, it seems. I just want to say, in retrospect, we were very civil, actually. I don't know what I was thinking. This is, no, this is... Uh, is this, this the is same a characterization a, of all wait, religions? Well, then? actually, no, because, remember, Islam makes one special claim for itself. All religions claim to be revealed truth. They, they all, all are founded by divine revelation. But Islam rather dangerously says, ours is the last and final one. There can't be any more after this. This is God's last word. Now, that's straight away a temptation to violence and intolerance, and if you note, it's a temptation they seem quite willing to fall for. Re Rabbi, Second, do you have any I had another motive, yes. another motive, which is this. If you remember Dick Gregory, the older comrades here, Will, great black comedian and civil rights activist, when he came to write his memoir, he called it nigger. Right. It upset a lot of people, including his old mum, who called him and said, why are you doing this? And he says, mama, every time you hear that word again, they're selling my book. <laughs> <laughs> so every, every Allahu Akbar reminds people that we're in a very serious struggle with a very depraved religion. And that help is available. And that friend, you, you, you give look, no quarter? I, I, look, he believes in the prophecy of Muhammad. I'm sorry to say, I, I think he's being at best conned. Yeah. Our time is ticking down.
It's very nice of you to have me back. The book is uh, Thomas Jefferson, Author of America. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but I'm going to tell you why you're here. You're here to help me. Christopher you. Hitchens, you are one of the only men to travel, maybe the only man, to travel to all three axis of evil countries. Yes, that's That true. is correct. Yeah, I think I'm the, I'm the only one to have written from there. There may have been a diplomat who's been there. There's certainly an arms dealer or two. But I have been, Good I've been, company. I've been in North Korea and Iran and Iraq several times and, and in Afghanistan and on the Pakistan border. Okay, so there's a URL pass that many people don't get punched. Well, the frequent flyer stuff in Afghan airlines, you don't want to know. No, it's a little rough. It ain't a bag of peanuts, no. I'm sure. Here's what I want to ask you. Here's, here's how you're going to help me. Help me understand why I am wrong about Iraq. I am confused. I don't know I what staying. That. I don't know I what just watch your act. I know. I don't know what staying the course means. I could see that too. I don't know uh, uh, what when he says this, we're going to fight him over there instead of fighting him over here. I think, but those other dudes who just had planes or just twenty of them. They, it's not a nation that attacked us. It was a, uh, an ideology. Explain to me why I'm wrong. Well, I'll give you something, please. Uh, just uh, f saying fighting them over there instead of over here is contradicting himself. It's either global or it isn't. So we're either fighting them everywhere or nowhere, and you make yourself a hostage to fortune. The next bomb that goes off in London, people say, I thought we'd taken care of that by fighting them there. That, that's stupid. And that's his bid for... Um, <laughs> Here's what I don't understand. Out of Pakistan, Saudi Arabia and Iran are the mm -hmm. two greatest supporters of terrorism in that region. North Korea uh, and Iran and Pakistan are the greatest threats in terms of weapons of mass destruction and proliferation. Uh, why then the urgency to go into Iraq, other than as an experiment drawn up on a bulletin board that would create a flowering of democracy that would change a region overnight well, to suddenly last, love and respect okay. us? I guess everyone's entitled to one softball question. Now you just did give me one. Really? Urgency. The big argument is, were we right to confirm Saddam Hussein in power? after defeating him in Kuwait. Should he be left in power in 1991? Mm -hmm. My side says no. That's the original and mistake. Bush's dad said yes. You, you say, uh, Bush's dad said yes, and, the, and it's very good that his son has cancelled that mistake. To say it's urgent, having let Iraq rot and crash for nearly 12 years, 13 years, it's not, that's not urgency. F second thing is, there are four conditions under which a country can, say it's, uh, can be said, told, its sovereignty is over. Um, one is repeated aggression against neighboring states. Mm -hmm. One is fooling around with the non-proliferation treaty. Mm -hmm. One is harboring gangsters and internationally wanted terrorists, and one is genocide, which if you sign the convention means you have to act, you're mandated to prevent or punish. Iraq had broken all four, more than once. And the United States Senate had passed uh, legislation in 1998 unanimously, 98 to nothing, the Iraq Liberation Act. It, it shall be the policy of the United States to remove this regime and begin the Middle East again. What's wrong with that? Anyone who wanted to complain should have written to their Democratic senator in 1998 and said, what's this about you promising to remove Saddam? Here's why. And they didn't. Here's why we didn't. Because it was right. an obviously right thing to be wanting to no, do. No, because it was an obviously symbolic thing to do. And nobody here thought anybody would be crazy enough to oh, get into no, the no. British and Churchillian method of, hey, let's just go in the Mideast and redraw the map the way we think it should be We're drawn. We're not redrawing the map. What could happen there? We're not redrawing the map. We're, We're not redrawing the map. No, the, 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 excuse me. Ah, the applause is dying faintly away. Um, I might get a clap before I'm done. Um, and People very much appreciate it. By the way, um, I really enjoy this. I've lost because, my place. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. All right. I really can't remember where we were just before that. This is you terrible. were saying to me that you agree that Bush is uh, conducting this incompetently. <laughs> yes. I've, got, I've just it's the I've, old Bugs Bunny trick. I've just written a long. I've just written. I've just written a long article for the Weekly Standard, which will say exactly. Does say exactly that. Is that true? Yeah. But so I think he's right. So let me let me try and get your position then, and, and it may he's, be one that's actually not as far from me as. Unfortunately, as go to I war thought. with the president. You have it's. Um, <laughs> Yes. He's, really he's, he's, right on the, he's right on the main point. We have deadly enemies in front of whom we cannot retreat. They do mean us harm, and uh, it is wrong to say that the cause of terrorism is our resistance to it, which is the root fallacy that's now being put around. Okay. Say, I, if we weren't mean to them, they wouldn't be so mean to us. Here's where I can see the, the difference. Bull I agree with uh, all your premises. I disagree that going into Iraq was the way to clarify those. I guess what I'm saying is I agree that there are people out there who want to do harm to us. What was the other one? Wait, oh, no, I remember now. Uh, what why the, is this the, the, to say the Iraq the Liberation Act was bluffing. Oh, I've got it now. All right. I've got it now. No, we're not trying to redraw the map. The, the Bin Ladenists are trying to redraw the map. They don't think Iraq should exist. They don't recognize the borders of Iraq. 
Lebanon, Jordan, Palestine, but whatever, Iraq they is, think I it mean, should all be part of but let's a face huge back. Islamic caliphate. But Iraq is, They're I the mean, ones who want to redraw the map. But let's, let's go back to the other we'll say we're on to to make it a federal democracy. We, we were coming to common ground. There are people out there who want to hurt us. Yeah, that was a bit platitudinous of me, I must say. Yeah. Uh, there's evil Next in the I'll world. Next I'll be saying the world's a dangerous place. Yeah, but, you know. exactly. Um, and well, to, to uh, resist terrorism is... Oh, the big fallacy is the people who say there wouldn't be all these terrorists in Iraq if we hadn't gone there. That, that's, that's, that's capitulation. I mean, Zakawi was there before we got there. Uh, Mr. Yassin, who blew up the World Trade Center, was being sheltered there since 1993. And if, if you want to see Find me a country in the Middle East that you Iraq, can't name five guys well, the guy, that tried well, to blow something up in the United States. <laughs> these, are, these are the guys. Pick one.